gambit lovers do i have for you the gambit of all gambits and okay let's get right to it so it is against d4 we're looking for uh good gambits to play against d4 uh and it is in the budapest gambit budapest gambit is offering this pawn in the center right away and after they take it we try and get it back and we're just going to be following here the most common moves for white to hang on to this pawn and now you see the most common moves for black here are to come out with this bishop either to attack f2 or to give a check right here and then next turn queen e7 so that we can recapture this pawn however i am proposing to you a different move here f6 it is unnamed it is unnamed at the moment but f6 so, so we are also trying to take back the pawn and people are overwhelmingly accepting our gambit we are now a pawn down but after queen takes f6 we are attacking the bishop and we are attacking b2 we're about to bring out this dark square bishop we're about to castle put a ton of pressure more on f2 and there's just so so many amazing sacrifices and all the crazy lines that i have spent a long time researching uh i'm so excited to show you i initially was going to have a sacrifice counter up in the top right corner but that just got a little bit out of control um so you guys can leave down below in the comments however many sacrifices you guys think there are uh in in, in this line in uh our, our f6 line which is currently unnamed you can also leave below in the comments a, a, a name for it right now but uh, we will go through all the possible options here for white and we're going to start with the most exciting one um bishop to all the way back to c1 which is actually not 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 a very good move but it's at least it looks like a safe move because it gets the bishop out of the way and also defends b2 and you, you, you guys might note, um, fans of this channel, um, I have proposed here kind of a similar looking idea for, for white in our Von Popiel Gambit. We play here bishop to g5 and encouraging the bishop to come out to f5 to reinforce e4, but then f3, and after queen takes f3, people are also going back to c8, realizing that they're in a lot of trouble. So it's the same sort of idea of dragging this bishop out here to, to attack uh, here and here with, with the queen. And we are now just utilizing this in an also very, very dangerous situation where we have all sorts of great targets. And okay, let's get right to these awesome lines. So we start out with check. We start with check and presumably knight d2 because they're probably not going to bring the bishop out because of this. Um, they don't want to move the knight because of this checkmate. Uh, knight c3, I'll, I'll note, is, is playable. Uh, very, very rare, but we can just take it. Uh, castle our king. You can also take these pawns if you'd like. But I'm recommending here to play like knight e5. A lot of pressure on this knight. Um, threatening checkmate here. Bishop e2 they should play. And after takes, here's a nice situation where, where black can actually collect a couple pawns. Um, and also keep white's king away from castling. So knight e5 coming back to put pressure on f2. But I don't imagine you'd see knight c3 uh, very often here when, when that's just walking into two attackers. Not very commonly played. So knight d2 overwhelmingly played. The other moves are not good. Okay. We just castle. We just castle, and now here I'm going to cover four moves for white. I'm going to cover here h3, g3, e3, and a3. <laughs> uh, I don't think white wants to move anything other than a pawn in this in, in this position, so let's get down to it. Uh, and to start you guys off, I'm going to cover g3, because this one's fun. This one is fun. So we are going to play an ace 5 and you'll see this is a common idea. Putting a lot of pressure here because we want to get to f2, our main target. So bishop g2, presumably. Knight takes f2. Knight takes f2. Let's get the sacrifice counter rolling. King takes, check. And now white, white, white's toasted because they got to come back here and some combination of queen to b6 and knight to e3 is going to get them. So for example, this is just winning the queen. King to g1, this is check. And coming in for checkmate with nothing to block that diagonal. King to e1, we first threaten checkmate. White's so bunched up here with all these pins. Rook f1, knight e3. White, white, white's completely lost with this bishop hanging and everything just hanging. <laughs> yeah, what a disaster. They want us, They want to gambit the queen. So, already fun stuff. This, this is, these are just innocent looking moves. Just g3, bishop g2 to, to, to get castled, and it's already a disaster. All right, let's get to uh, h3. h3 is one of the more sound options because we actually don't have a crazy knight sacrifice here, and we should go back with our knight. Uh, and here, white can play here, pawn to e3. And now here I'm recommending, uh, black has a couple options. Black can play knight takes f3 and actually force the, their way to get the pawn back. So queen takes f3, proposing a trade. Bishop takes d2. Uh, bishop takes d2, and we can take on b2, actually. However, that gets the pawn back, but I am going to suggest here a different move, 
which is just queen over to g6. Queen over to g6 is a really infuriating move uh, for white to deal with because there's a pressure on g2, and that bishop that they wanted to develop can't develop, and they also are not castling this way with, with, with uh, that bishop blocking them. So nothing really can move for white. It's very frustrating. The, the top moves for the engine are a3 to get this bishop out of the way. Bishop actually can come all the way back to e7. And after b4, uh, I believe bishop here to f6 we can play. White should move their... Uh, should white play here? Something like rook a2, b6. And this bishop just comes out very nicely. This rook comes to the center. Uh, and it's a very, very uh, difficult situation here for, for, for white to deal with. With all these pieces playing, playing very, very well. Pressure here. Pressure uh, looking at knight d3. Pressure down these files. And very difficult for white to play in general because again this bishop can't move they have really no prospects of development with all the pressure there so h3 was, was one option but let's look at the main line which is going to be e3 and e3 invites us to do a sacrifice that almost no one has seen before but i guess five people have it is pawn to d5 Crazy stuff. We're just going to be opening things up for our final pieces to enter the attack. This is just so, so exciting. Okay, so let's see see this after c takes d5. And they see d5. Okay, we have a ton of pressure on f3. And that is significant because we also are going to have a lot of pressure on f2. And now I'll allow you to pause the video maybe and think about what you might play for white here. Okay, you probably suggested bishop e2. Although maybe h3 or a3 to kick out these other pieces. And let's have a look at everything. So bishop e2. We're still going to take this knight. And now white has g takes and bishop takes. G takes looks like it might be very efficient at making that knight finally retreat. However, we have a very nice move here. Queen to h4. Queen to h4 attacking f2. And we also have our rook's help. So they cannot take like that because that is checkmate. So white here, they can't play knight e4 because of this spin. They have to play rook f1. And after knight takes e3, uh, using all of our fantastic pins here, uh, white's completely lost. Threatening, threatening checkmate. <laughs> so bishop takes f3, they should play. And now here we play queen to h4. And again, pressure on f2. <laughs> and again, is just so, so infuriating for white. They have no easy way to deal with this. This allows checkmate. It opens up the rook. Castling loses to a different checkmate. Okay, they have maybe two options. They have g3 and queen e2. And let's discuss. So, so g3, we're going to play queen up to h3. And here I'll note, if I turn on the engine, it's actually just uh, completely lost. Completely, completely lost. Uh, so it's, it's, it's some very fun stuff that we've got going on. Uh, one of our many threats is, for example, if white just plays here a3, we're going to take this knight anyway because it was defending this, takes over here, bishop g4. We're using all of our pieces here. We're going to just kill them on f3. With that rook taking, with this rook coming into the game, white is just completely lost here. The queen e2 provides, instead of a3, provides some sort of reinforcement here. But again, let's get that sacrifice counter rolling. Rook takes f3. We've got new guys coming into the game to replace them. Nate back to e5. <laughs> and I just love this, how just this, this queen's got nowhere good to go, because... White has just no defense around the light, the light square. So like queen e2, for example, bishop g4. Um, and uh, all of black's pieces here are just using these light squares and just having so much fun. There's really nothing white can do here. I think queen f1 only move. This is check. Excellent pin. Check. Let me get that queen next turn. So the most, uh, the, the, the strongest move is probably queen e4, attacking some things. No matter, bishop to g4. <laughs> and another very fun position. So if they take this bishop, we've got checkmate. Uh, otherwise, we're threatening just knight of 3. So they take our knight. Queen g2. We've sacrificed a lot of stuff at this point. Uh, in addition to those couple pawns, we've sacrificed now a full rook. But queen g2 threatening to take that with checkmate. Rook f1, queen f3. That's going to be checkmate. Uh, and here white should play queen e6 to take the bishop to not lose the game right away. But <laughs> lots and lots of really fun stuff. White just has no development and, and just no control over key squares in, in order to help them here. Um, so we just queen h3. We sacrifice for that light square bishop. Bring our own stuff in. And white's got nothing. So queen e2, I believe white can try. Uh, no matter, we just play knight back to e5. Knight back to e5. And we're, again, going to put overwhelming pressure right there. And so, for example, let's say a3. We can take this knight, 
play bishop to g4. Attacking f3 even further. We've got a few guys on him now. So they take our bishop. They're like, okay, we finally got that defended. But we have, instead of just taking back here, rook takes f2. Rook takes f2. Let's get the sacrifice counter rolling. Takes, check, win the queen, win the game. Again here, white just had no defense. I think they can try castling. I believe just bishop takes d2. Takes. You can take f3 here. Yep, not looking... Not looking very good for them. Queen h3, all these threats on these light squares. White white is just losing. Castling's not going to help them. There's nowhere your king is safe. So so that covers bishop to e2. We're going to take f3. We're going to slip in with queen h4. And they lose. So let's have a look now at uh, a3. a3 being another option. However, again, we take f3. And now it looks like, okay, just queen takes f3. White's doing fine. They're going to trade off queens because this bishop's under attack. However, once we move that queen, we're going to be attacking them with the rook. So first we just take this knight. And if bishop takes d2 after queen takes b2, white's queen is attacked and their rook is attacked. Uh, and they are going to lose the game here because queen d1 being the only option to save everything. But now we're going to take f2. Uh, just threats all over the board. King takes d2. It's possible uh, to, to keep the bishop holding here. After queen d6, though, again, we're just taking f2. Uh, with, with our rook, maybe with our knight, and just queen takes d5, and white has nothing here. g takes f3, they can try. g takes f3 is a try, so they're attacking a couple things. We go back to our old reliable queen h4, hitting f2. They can't take our knight because we still take f2, because we got our rook playing in the game. We got so many things playing in the game, so they have to try queen e2. And now we just come back here, bishops, to c5. Bishop to c5, uh, putting lots and lots of threats. So now the issue for white is if they take our knight, we're going to play bishop takes g4, and they lose. <laughs> they lose because the queen can't move anywhere, uh, because it was the only piece that was actually doing anything. It was the only piece that was doing any job, and nobody can hear block on f3, because all our pieces are doing so well. And so here, white needs to find some like insane defenses just to hang on. Uh, here, knight e4 gives them equality. But, I mean, this is just such a fun position to play for, for, for black here. Knight e4. We can play here. Knight e5. So they take our bishop. We can play knight takes f3 check. And bishop to g4. <laughs> and here again, white will lose their queen. Because any knight move is going to kill them right here. Uh, and if they run away, we have these checks. Uh, just everything. Everything is coming up in our favor. Everything's coming up in our favor. I think they need to find here bishop to g2. Maybe only defense. Again, we're going to keep throwing the pressure on them. Take uh, bishop h3. Now they should take it. And we can take this with check. And then take this knight. And again, right? Like, like we haven't even sacrificed a piece for this attack. But look how great this attack is. Look at all, all of our pieces in the game doing so well. And white's just barely, barely struggling to hang on. Uh, so I think that, that, that I think was the engine's recommendations. Uh, so not fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> so here... White had one more uh, opportunity here, which was pawn to h3 instead of pawn to a3. So I think we're still going to take this knight. And similar idea. So if queen takes f3, we're going to play bishop takes d2. And again, if bishop takes d2, takes and winning material with the same sorts of threats. King takes d2. Again, we slide out of the way. Uh, and everything for white, of whites is under attack. Here, white has g takes f3. And again, queen takes h4. Queen to h4, uh, overwhelming pressure right on f2. And white here should play queen to e2 in order to defend. Because f takes g4 again, checkmate. h takes g4, we take the rock. So, queen to e2. And now we can play here, I believe, just back knight e5. I believe just back knight e5. Ah, oh, no, we keep these sacrifices going. I'm sorry, I could use this with another line. Knight takes e3. Knight takes e3. We are going to keep having lots of fun here. Knight takes e3. So we have this pin. Queen takes, they should play. Bishop to f5. And now white's in a tough situation because our next move is just going to be rook into e8. Uh, and it's going to be very, very hard for them to get in uh, an 84. So, for example, king d1 here. Rook e8. Now where should the queen move? Queen b3, let's say. It's very hard to find. I think queen b3 is the only square where it's uh, safe. And after queen takes f2, they can't even take our bishop because we're threatening checkmate. So, so many, so, so, so many awesome sacrifices here. Uh, 
So the last thing about D5 is if they decline our gambit, is if they're just like, okay, I understand I need to get castled quickly. I don't have time to take this pawn. Let me just play bishop to e2. Let me just play bishop e to e2 and survive and just castle. And we say no. <laughs> d4. Going to d5 was one to get these out of the way, but this pawn has value in and of itself. We're going to play d4 and we're going to have a lot, a lot of fun. So if, again, if they castle, we just take it. And he takes e3. I mean, I mean, it's just completely unplayable for them. So they have to react to this. And presumably they play takes. They play takes, and after we recapture, they're like, okay, we're just going to castle. However, get the sacrifice counter rolling. Knight takes f2. Knight takes f2. Okay. Let's have a look. King takes f2. And again, all these sacrifices work because they're just so bunched up, and all our pieces are just going to be so good. So queen takes d4, check. Excellent pin on the knight here. Okay. They have here king to f1, and after which we play bishop to c5. Threatening checkmate. King to f1 allows us to maintain our pin uh, right here. So they, they must play queen e1. I believe it is the only way to guard queen f2 checkmate is to play queen e1. And now we're down a piece, but we're just going to play bishop e6. We're just going to play bishop e6. And this position is just so interesting because, well, one, it's completely lost. They can, Stockfish takes a second to figure it out, but it figures it out. And it's because white just has no moves. So we're gonna, we're like playing rook e8, uh, and we're just going to like kill them on this file. We're going to kill them on this file. Uh, and white really just cannot move any of their pieces here. So knight b3. So why do we play bishop e6? It was against knight b3. It looks like it's the one move they have. It attacks our queen, and it's threatening to trade off for this bishop as well. However, bishop e6 fought specifically against knight b3. Rook takes f3. Another sacrifice. So g takes f3. Allows bishop to h3. Checkmate. Very, very nice. Bishop takes f3. Allows bishop takes c4. This was the point. This was the point of this. So now, so it was because this knight left the defense. All right, so now bishop e2 back, and rook f8. We're using all our pieces. Queen f2, only legal move. Checkmate. Ooh, ooh, ooh a clever checkmate instead. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yes, so lots and lots of fun here. So king e1 only move. King e1, I think, is a little bit more sensible because it is attacking our queen. Gets off of this. However, king e1 walks into a new pin. A new pin. Rook takes f3, and they cannot recapture with the knight. So now g takes f3. Check mate mate on the way mate on the way i believe right here <laughs> all of that was a forced rolling checkmate we're covering all the squares knight is blocking everything uh and all of white's pieces are just very very frustrated with one another bishop takes f3 it looks here like white may be winning there's actually no immediate knockout blow but the best move is bishop f5 after which white is lost <laughs> so the point is just rookie eight is so like for example if a3 rookie eight king f1 bishop d3 good game Bishop e2 is forced, and white's going to lose the queen. Uh, bishop e here, I'll note, just, just you know, kill our pin right there. So queen e2 is going to be the only option white has in order to stop rook e8. But then just knight e5. Just knight e5, we're just going to waltz right in uh, to knight d3. And here, white loses. White loses. They really have nothing they can do against just kind of knight d3 check, knight f2, bishop d3 rook here. Everything just pouring in and giving white just completely, completely overwhelming threats. So that's the fun we have if we just push that pawn all the way, and if they take it, giving us another sacrifice. So maybe they're like, okay, well, maybe somehow they see that. Maybe somehow they see that, and they're like, okay, I'm just going to push past you. Please stop sacrificing things. We say no. For the third time, this pawn keeps pushing up the board, trying to sacrifice itself. And here, I think it's just a little too ridiculous for white to play bishop to f1. Uh, I think at that point, they just have nobody defending f2. So, okay, they have to take it, finally. We play knight here. Knight here attacking this now unprotected bishop. Of course, they cannot take it, because that allows checkmate. Bishop must go back. <laughs> and, of course, and, of course, the move here, um, I believe, is knight takes f... Is, oh, yes, I'm sorry. It's just ba ba back bishop c5. It's just back bishop c5 attacking here, and they have no more knight e4, is the point. And so now they need a castle to defend it. They think they're in the clear. They are not in the clear. Knight takes f2. A very nice additional sacrifice. One more time. Uh, lots and lots of pressure here. And we're just going to pick up that rook and just be up lots of material winning the game. So that's d5, d4 for you. And maybe one more. You get to play d3 as well. Uh, just, just a super, super fun one. Uh, I'll give you one more. So a3 here, white can play as well. We covered h3, knight back. Covered g3, 
which allows us to go knight here and this sacrifice with knight g4, queen b6. Uh, we cover e3, which is, of course, d5, and allowing knight ce5 next turn. We'll cover here a3. So we bishop a5 back. If, if white plays now e3, d5 is going to pretty much transpose to the line without this. Really, the pawn on a3 is not making much of a difference. White cannot play b4 in any case because they're going to lose a rook. But white does have one more option in this position, if not to transpose, it's to play here rook b1. Rook b1 just getting out of the way of this and trying to play here b4 and c5. So here we just get the bishop out of the way, attacking f2. And after e3, we again play d5, our all reliable pawn sacrifice after takes, knight c to e5, and a ton of pressure on f3. And again, white uh, is not going to be able to defend this Do to our fun sacrifices. So let's say they play b4 anyway, trying to keep, complete this plan of actually activating that bishop, which is dead in every other line. But we strike first. Knight takes f2, takes, and another one. Bishop takes e3, check, and here white is again completely lost. So let's say they take it, check, um, and I mean, everything loses. It, it's, it's, it's pretty fun to actually figure out. So let's say king here or here. We'll allow knight to f2, check, winning the queen next turn. And if king back, I believe, just rook e8 check. And again, knight f2 check next turn, winning the queen. Or or maybe some other fun checkmates on the way here. Uh, I believe bishop e2 is not a saving grace because it allows the same exact idea. Knight takes f2, knight g4. White actually did us a favor by putting our bishop here. It's even better. Uh, king e1, knight takes e3. And here I'll note, this pawn being in the way blocked a lot of checks. A lot of like things that might have come with tempo. So this d5 idea allowing takes knight e5, it's really good for a lot of reasons. So here queen b3, knight takes g2, check. And white again is completely lost with black just having overwhelming development and compensation for whatever they've sacrificed in every line. So that about covers uh, bishop back to c1. All the way back here, our opponent realized that we did something funny. They brought their bishop back to c1 to try and unfunny the business. We are refunding the business with this check. Knight d2, pretty much forced. But after castles, we have, again, this excellent, excellent idea of d5 to open up a lot of things. And after takes, knight e5. And really bringing in all the pieces into the game, having a lot of fun with sacrifices. So that covers bishop to c1. And next, we will cover other moves in this position. So queen d2 is the next most common move for white. Uh, and this one, we are going to play bishop to b4, forcing knight c3 to not lose the queen, and we're going to take it. We're going to take advantage of the moment that they cannot play queen takes c3 because they're going to lose the bishop, and so must play pawn takes c3. And now we're just going to play d6. And basically, what's going to happen in this line is that this pawn is now going to be very uh, weak, and we're just going to target it, uh, and white is going to run into some issues if they try to save the pawn. So for example, I'll discuss here e3 and h3. So here's h3 kicking the knight, and we come back knight e5. And this one might not have been such a great idea, because now, okay, e3, g3, not really playable, because too much pressure on f3 to move this pawn and allow us to maybe take it and just push g5 or something to take f3 next turn. So here, with the pressure on c4 now, no way to defend it this way, white should take. And now we have here, knight takes e5, it's playable, but I'm going to recommend to you d takes e5, and asking this bishop where to go. So bishop g5, you, you can see, is the most common move, but here we're going to play queen over to g6, leaving white in a bit of a bind. So this pawn cannot move to e3 without losing the bishop. The queen needs to defend. e4 is unplayable. So g3 to, is white's only bet to continue development. And after bishop e6 here, white needs to know to play bishop g2 and actually just give back their precious, precious pawn, after which the position is equal. If they play here c5, really trying to hang on to things, then we just kick the bishop so that we can use this square for our rook next turn. So bishop e3 forced, rook over to d8, queen b2, I think only move, attack the rook, rook g1, and after castles, this is just very, very excellent compensation. Um, because white really needed to be able to castle and, and hold their extra pawn, that was their goal, and here white has just no prospects of ever getting their king safe, and the position's really just kind of a complete disaster for them. Here... You see the engine recommending castling long into no king safety at all. So the position is going to be very, very difficult to play if you just can't have a long-term solution for your king. Uh, bishop to g3, it's also playable. Uh, after which I'd recommend just bishop f5. 
and after e3 uh playing here h5 again we can give our opponents lots of problems because we can play here h4 and queen g6 <laughs> targeting g2 and there's actually no good solution for that pawn because if you castle you lose this one due to the pin you just introduced and bishop f3 is not playable because of e4 so we're, we're really taking advantage of this moment that we have right now to make it as hard as possible for them to develop and not really able to castle. And so here, white needs to play rook g1. Again, another concession with the king never finding safety. So allowing that tempo on the bishop, probably not the best idea, but here they really didn't have a choice. So e3 uh, is the main idea, after which we can just play uh, knight back to e5 anyway. And here, white presumably plays bishop, e, bishop to e2, however... I will cover knight d4, knight takes e5, bishop e2, I think it's the most natural move, but this position has been played twice, and we see one knight d4, and one knight takes e5. If knight d4, um, it, I don't think it's any worries here, we just castle, and after bishop e2, knight a5. We have a lot of ways to target that pawn, and I think here black uh, recaptures the pawn very comfortably and is doing just fine. Uh, knight takes e5, allows d takes e5. Bishop to g3, but now a better move than in the game, bishop g4. Here I'd recommend bishop to d7. Bishop to d7 because it allows very nice castles long. With an excellent file that we've just opened up here. And I think white's queen here is in uh, some serious trouble. So nobody yet has found the, the, the top move that I think is bishop to e2. And after bishop e6, we're targeting c4. Uh, and white, now their only way to deal with it is to eliminate this knight. If they want to keep their extra pawn, and if they want to play for anything, and if they want to follow all the Stockfish recommendations. So knight takes e5, knight takes e5. Again, d takes e5 is also playable, but I think knight takes e5 here is pretty clearly forcing uh, bishop capture. And now we, here we can play pawn takes. And after castles, castles. This is all the uh, optimal ways to play for white, according to Stockfish. They emerge with their precious, precious extra pawn. However, things aren't really so easy. So we can look at, you know, some moves that have been played here. Let's say like arcade d1, I think we're just going to play queen g6. Queen g6 is probably our next move anyway. And here we have some serious threats because let's say it's our move again. We play bishop h3 and that's already losing for white because we're threatening mate there. Bishop f3 is not playable. And otherwise they move the pawn and give us the rook. And so they need to be pretty careful here. A lot of people here are playing e4, just allowing rook d8. Um, and here after, I think just pawn b6, don't lose that. Keep that as a weakness. E4, I mean, it's quite the concession to put all the pawns on light squares blocking your own bishop. You could see here the engine's just offering some equality after rook d1, queen f4. The game's pretty much drawn. Uh, I think this is pretty much the best way for white to play. White cannot really make any use of their extra pawn, even if you trade off ever, everything off here other than these bishops. So, that's pretty much the best white can do here. Queen b2, again, I think just b6, queen g6, and here black is doing perfectly fine. So that's pretty much queen d2. There's not a lot to it. Uh, it's quite forcing. We play bishop b4. Uh, we come out, we force pawn take c3 to put a lot of pressure on c4. Uh, and there's some lines if white tries to get very greedy that we can punish them. But otherwise, queen d2 is probably one of the more sound responses. However, white has some unsound responses. So I'll get to those. Uh, including here, e3. e3 is the third most common move and allows us to take b2. Okay, well, let's talk about this. So knight b2, d2 is forced in order to provide some defense here. And now we need to be very careful because if we kind of do nothing and allow white to castle, then our queen's kind of in a jam and all their pieces might actually be pretty good and they're going to attack our queen. Maybe they can even take that when they get a chance. So we're going to strike quickly with, here with knight b4. Knight b4 threatening knight c2. And now here white has two moves. They have knight d4 and they have rook c1. And we're going to talk about both. So let's talk here about rook c1 first. Knight takes a2. We're snagging another pawn. So rook c2. Looks like knight takes a2 is a bad idea. We're going to play not queen a3. Queen a3 is not going to be a good idea because actually of knight d4. A good move attacking this knight, threatening knight b5, putting a lot of pressure here and here. But the key move is a move that hasn't yet to be played before. It's knight c3. Crazy, crazy stuff. Okay, we're counterattacking the queen. If, if our opponent moves the queen, we can trade. Here we're actually already up a pawn, but bishop b4. Uh, our next move is knight e4, taking advantage of this, taking advantage of a nice pin. Okay, okay. So they take our queen, right? We take theirs. However, what we have here is these two knights miraculously 
uh, somehow this knight came here, this knight came all the way around, miraculously they join up to hit f2 together. Wow. So if, if they take our knight, we take f2, uh, king e1, and we take this rook. And this position is pretty interesting, so so like they can take c7, I think is, is the top choice of the engine. Take c7, we just play like b6 or something to get our pieces out. Uh, somehow here white needs to be able to collect this knight as well. And the position is pretty interesting. We're going to get like at, at least a few pawns for that. Uh, here, imagine like knight takes g3. So we have a rook and two two pawns for a couple pieces for, for, for a pair of knights. Uh, and leading to an interesting end game. It, this is if both sides play, uh, I think, completely optimally. And takes, takes, and rook c8. And it's a game. Very interesting stuff. So... However, they don't have to take that knight, and a lot of people I feel like might not, because it's not clear that you're getting that uh, knight out of there. So let's say they play some sort of rook move. And here we take rook g1. So another reason why I think people might go for this is because it looks like these knights are kind of toast now, because this one can't move, and white's next move is just going to be h3, forcing this knight to move back, after which this is lost. Okay, we must now fax bishop to c5. Pressuring e3, so they play h3. Knight takes e3. So if they take it, we're all good. It's defended. So they need to take here. But we play now knight d5 check. Very important to eliminate this dark square bishop, actually. It was a pretty good piece. So knight d5 check. Great use of the discovered attack. Remember, discovered attacks are fantastic because we can go to non-safe squares um, in between in order to get where we want to go. Because that's check. So king g3. Let's make a quick trade here. Take g1. And this one is a much, much, much worse version of what wake up before you can see here this one's lost um they have two knights for a rook but here their pieces are just completely uncoordinated and black's got some nice extra pawns that are just gonna run so <laughs> fun end game results here if our opponent goes for rook c1 where you can play knight takes a2 and come back knight c3 to take and join on the f2 pawn however if white's very smart they'll find the less common move, knight to d4. You can see Stockfish is already saying you're completely insane. Stockfish is right. <laughs> so bishop to c5, we're going to play. Now the issue with knight d4 wasn't just that it defended c2, but it was the fact that that knight was hanging, and I just let it hang. Um, we didn't really have time to play d6 because there was like rook b1, knight b5, threatening here, our queen was in a jam. So we're just going to gambit the knight. It'll be fine. Bishop c5. So, okay, they can't play queen takes g4 because the rook kings. So they need to know here to play rook b1 first. Queen takes a2. Now the knight defends it so they can play queen takes g4. And so now we're going to castle. And so now, okay, what the heck is going on? What the heck is going on here? Now, if you're a human, you'll probably just play bishop e2 to, try, like, try to castle. If you're stockfish, though, you'll play knight f5, which is the one move stockfish loves. But... Okay, we can look at what's going on here. So the thing is, bishop e2, even if I give white another move here, you can't castle because this knight's hanging, right? So so, so so this is the problem white's having. And you can't move the knight because the rook's hanging. So you need to kind of untangle this all. It looks like maybe you're fine, your king should be safe, you should be able to defend everything, but it's so much harder than it looks to actually make that work. I'll, I'll cover Stockfish's top recommendation. I'll, I'll turn on the engine here just so you, you know what you're dealing with. You know what you're walking into here. <laughs> um, these are very hard moves to find. We're already in a situation where there's no games in the database. But okay, knight f5. I'll, I'll note Stockfish, I think, overestimates white's advantage here a lot. So okay, it's threatening queen takes g7. We should take it. Leela thinks Stockfish, uh, thinks Stockfish is being too excited here for white. Oh, we just play here d6. Okay, queen e4. I mean, this is already difficult because there's already like multiple squares for the queen, but queen e4 is the best one uh, because I think it... It reinforces the rook a little bit. And after bishop to d7, we can play here, I think, bishop e2. We play here bishop c6, threatening to take g2. Again, white's king never reaches safety. This knight cannot be defended, really, with castling. You'd have to give it give it up. At any moment, if white is ready to uh, castle, like, let's say, plays rook d1, is ready to castle, we throw in a c2 check. And otherwise, all these pieces really join the fight pretty well. We've got a pass pawn there, too. And I think this is really, really hard for white to play, honestly. This is my honest opinion. But just so you know, just so you see what you're dealing with here, I will be completely transparent. Stockfish does not like this, but he finds here check. Uh, another queen move you need to find, or h4, or something like this. And it's not like white's getting out of this bind anytime soon. So... So I will submit that to you as my recommendation, but it is uh, maybe a less pleasant one. So bishop e2 is the main uh, line here. 
I, I, I think, is, is, is more likely for your opponent to play. But after d6, queen g3, and here just bishop to d7, I think here uh, you're doing completely fine. Because it's, again, it's very hard to untangle. So again, castles, you would lose this knight. And it, it's very difficult. So let's say knight here to defend this, to be able to castle. Here I would say bishop f5, attacking the rook. And bishop to d3, sneaking right in there and making things hard on white to castle once more. So if they take it, now knight takes d3. We're going to take here, we're going to take on f2. This is already a bad situation for white. Uh, so... A very, very difficult uh, disentanglement. They can play rook d1 right away, but I believe that's kind of a mistake. Allows bishop to d4. Yes, bishop takes d4 and rook e8. Pressure here. And again, <laughs> wait, really wanting to castle, but cannot because they will lose that bishop hole. Or we can just check and take that pawn. So I think this is some very, very good compensation for the piece. And I think your opponent, if they're finding all of this, Either A, they're stockfish, or B, they're really good. And we're probably going to beat you anyway. So you may as well have some fun. <laughs> so, Nate B4, uh, Nate D4, I will note, it's it's stockfish thinks this is very, very scary. But I really like this bishop C5 and this peace sacrifice where white's king is not really able to castle. So that's pretty much covers E3. E3 is a very, very sharp line. We'll cover one more move, which is queen to C1. Queen to c1, it's it's kind of interesting. You can see it's actually less common than knight c3, which just hangs the bishop. Queen to c1, we can do the same things. We can do the same things with bishop to b4 check. But I will submit to you a new recommendation, which is bishop to c5. And so here, you're going to have three types of players. You're going to have those that see f2 and maybe want to play e3, but are like knight takes f2, king takes f2, queen takes f4 uh, is a nice little tactic. However, there might be very advanced players who here see that they can play bishop to g5. Bishop to g5, saving the bishop. And once the queen moves, they're going to take the knight. And we say, okay, <laughs> it was a nice sacrifice. It, it was more than a little trick. It was a knight sacrifice. So here, king takes f2. So there's no bishop to take back. But here we castle. And now again, we're in white's in a situation with no development. And this bishop is going to be taken due to the pin on this knight. So really, the only move to hang on to that, you can't go here, right? Remember, that's not a safe square. The only move to hang on to that, so you can play here king e2 to get off that, but I think after rook takes f3, uh, white just does not have enough material to justify this awful position with all of black's pieces doing fantastic. So bishop to h4 you can play, but after queen h6, that's another threat. Same situation, same situation. So this bishop needs to move again, and now rook e8, and just overwhelming pressure on e3, and white loses because... Black just takes e3 and is probably winning the queen, I think, in most lines. So that's another fun fun little trick within a trick there, because they think they were the one tricking you with bishop to g5, but they were not. Um, and so th there might be people kind of in the middle there who see bishop to g3 as an alternative, because they see knight takes f2, but maybe they didn't see bishop to g5, if, if that makes sense. Anyway, bishop to g3. Here we can just play, I believe, uh, h5. And after h3, we can bring the knight back. And after bringing the knight right back here, this is just a tough situation for white. Because we're going to take, forcing some sort of doubled pawns. And again, white's going to lose their castle. We're going to play h4. We're going to castle our king. And we're just going to bring out all of our pieces with a nice position. Uh, and if they played here e3, it was a mistake. Because of after h4, this bishop is out of squares. And again, allowing knight takes f2 once more for this little trick. So, I am actually going to show to you guys a game I played uh, with this. I had planned on playing like a bunch of games and being able to show them to you, but I wasn't really getting many games, um, many many d4 players when I was trying to do this. Uh, let me let me move myself over here. Uh, and so here, my opponent finally, finally, I got this. I finally got a Budapest player. I got the line I wanted. We play here f6, takes, queen takes. And I was so excited. I'm like, okay, I'm playing a national master. He's going to like know to play like at least like like w w one of these lines that I'm going to get to display. I'm going to get to show all my knowledge. And my opponent, a national master, just plays knight c3 <laughs> to shield b2 and just lets me take the bishop right away and resigns on the spot. I just thought that was completely hilarious. Uh, I was so excited to play it to, to play these lines. I guess it just does go to show you that it can happen. Uh, if we switch back here, it totally can happen. Uh, we go back to the beginning. 
they see three it has been played 141 times or and and more have just let you guys take this fish up so it's possible national master did it against me that's the only game that i have yet to, to be able to play uh from this position although i will definitely be trying to play more uh oh i'll say one more thing here so every move for white uh h3 e3 and ac3 just allows us to take back this pawn uh and white no longer has an extra pawn other than one there is one move queen to d5 queen to d5 allows white to try and keep their extra pawn however it is a trick it is a trick and this is very exciting so it, it might be the first trick you get here so f takes e5 we play and so okay all six people playing knight takes and after we take it bishop takes we come out here bishop Ooh, wait i think i got the order wrong we come out for check first check first so that there's no bishop c3 back and now both knight d2 and knight c3 are gonna lose so this is exciting so knight c3 we play here queen to f6 and our queen now just does so many great things on f6 in addition to not getting checkmated uh it attacks the bishop it attacks this knight now three times we got we're ready to take it and also blends through for a hit there so for example knight takes g4 that's a free knight but we just take this one more and we're winning the rook with check and we are winning the game after queen to f6 white is losing mm, ah i'm so wrong take the knight first take the knight first now play queen f6 <laughs> i am sorry uh attacking this knight they take g4 queen takes c3 we're winning the game here knight d2 is also playable i'm gonna make sure i don't mess this one up but we have here knight takes c5 e5 bishop takes and c6 and now what we're preparing is like queen a5 check so this queen needs to move and hold on to this bishop so let's say queen e4 but we go uh or let's say queen d4 we go takes king takes d2 only move or else if queen takes we take the knight we take the bishop but here queen a5 check and we pick up the bishop uh with a winning position so queen e4 had to be played but otherwise we still take it and now knight takes f2 forking the queen and rook there's no good moves with the bishop because they need to first save their queen and therefore white is losing here so yes everything loses uh if they take the pawn one more time here here they need to realize that they need to move their bishop um after which that is that so i hope you got you guys love it takes f6 is, i mean it's being played overwhelmingly and otherwise you know white just doesn't have their extra pawn uh queen takes f6 and here just so many options but all of them run into some fun lines i will post the leech study uh with all these lines in, in the link in the description and stay tuned on this channel and on my twitch which i'll also link here uh to watch me play all this and leave a comment below about what you think this line should be named i didn't want to name it like the grafe variation i thought that was a little bit vain uh but but with f6 uh and le leave also a comment below about the sacrifice counter and anything else that you think about this line or if you want me to cover some other lines thank you guys so much for watching be sure to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and have a great day